We are in it. How are you guys were hot today? How many people were hot today? It has been unbearably hot for a lot of people. Lord knows my heart pours out. It's been a lot of heat. Lots of heat. Even on the East Coast, uh, temperatures are, they trended upward very high, extremely high. Chances are, uh, and, and you know, August, even though July is the um, hottest month on record ever. Do you guys know that? July is. So this month has broken all records. But of course, you guys know August and September are the brutal months. You're talking about sustained temperatures, for example, on the East Coast, which is normally, uh, they, have, they have wide temperature fluctuations. But can you imagine three weeks on the East Coast of the temperature being over 97 degrees? Because you guys, uh, you think that can be handled? And, of course, we did cover some of the power grid yesterday for that very reason. They know it's coming. They can see the trending. Uh, by the way, all the things that you see on the Internet, these are uh, NOAA sensors. Um, corporations have uh, spent lots of money in conjunction with government um, research programs to get the pulse of the world. And right now, everything is changing. It looks like the equator, uh, the temperatures at the equator, have moved up of some uh, quite a few miles, thousands of miles upward. And so um, right now in the Gulf, of, for example, if you look in the Gulf of Mexico, there's a heat, there, heat anomaly there, right? The water is the hottest than anywhere else on the planet right there in the Gulf of uh, Mexico. Also, on the western coastlines of Mexico, the hottest water temperatures recorded in the world. Isn't that, that is weird, right? It's weird because the equator normally has sustained temperatures that are the hottest all over the world. Well, not anymore. It has moved north. It's coming up towards us. Uh, Florida, naturally, they also share in those temperatures. 100 and uh, I believe it was uh, fluctuating. They give everybody the mean or the average. But uh, some of the actual water temperatures are already up to 113 degrees uh, and higher, right? Uh, which means sea life is dying in those areas. It is changing. Uh, everything is changing. Currents are beginning to change, which is a big deal. Uh, that's a big deal when ocean currents actually change and alter because of heat. Uh, you have these driving... Uh, these uh, driving forces like magma, the sun, of course, uh, um, that, that uh, new uh, stream particles coming in from the sun, which are solar winds, but they're not blocked like they used to be. So you have an increase in radiation. And, of course, uh, one of the terms I coined here was a signal shield because that is failing. Expect more, uh, more of those uh, solar streams to breach the magnetosphere coming directly to you know, in the atmosphere, directly charging quite a few things. So uh, we live in very different times. All of this is going to culminate in a very uh, difficult event for us to handle, right? And we're going to go over that. It's the water event. And, of course, uh, some of that water event depends on uh, the loosing grip of, of the seamount connected to some of these... Um, some of these large continents, which are in fact uh, big, big ice sheets that are floating and attached to the water by very small you know, conduits. They're going to be broken. They're melting off. And uh, when that happens, not good. Now, I'm going to break something for you so you guys understand. They fully expected this process to happen in, by 2030. That was... Uh, that was back in 2010. 2030 was the date they set. And the trends put the current uh, anomaly or this, this current uh, global crisis point at 2030. And so what they were doing was they planned everything to have this water event around 2030. 
right? So it's not something that could happen. It's something that is happening. You're, it, it, the process has already begun. All that's out the window because everything they thought that would happen by 2030, uh, most of the events, for example, on the timeline, if the major event back in 2010, they said would happen in 2030, um, right now, 2023, they had expected certain events to have taken place for the Earth to yield certain temperatures. But here's what happened. The temperatures we were having right now, back in 2010, the data put the activity that we're having right now that it would actually happen in 2028. But it's happening now, right? So let me say it again. In 2010, they spent hundreds of millions of dollars coming up with this uh, warning, right? And believe me, everything is starting was starting to follow that plan. They knew it was going to happen by 2030, right? They said 2030. On, the, on these trending lines or certain events, the old one, there are certain events that would have happened by 2028. Right, 2028. Everything they thought that would begin to happen in 2028 has already happened this year, 2023. Now, I don't know about you, but mathematically, that what that actually means is everything's accelerated to the point what they expected in 2030 is actually, um, you know, there's a very high probability. We're going to see that in 2023, the end of 2023, or 2024. And all you have to do is the year from 2010 to 2030, make a big line, right? Put your little tick mark at 2028, and then take today's date from 2010 to 2023, right? And you do that ratio between the two, and you're going to find out that everything is escalated beyond the point of no return number one, but everything is happening so fast that it puts the 2030 date at 2024. That's not good, right? It's not good at all. And what that means, they, they expected water to cover the earth momentarily at about that uh, in some areas, it would be 25 feet. In some areas, it would be 80 feet. In some areas, it would be 13 feet, but everybody would see water. There are areas on the map that they knew would be only safe for, you know, a minimal time period. But for the most part, a saturation event, a water event, uh, would take place and start to displace everything, right? So this is what, this is the trend that we're on because of the, uh, these, these long durational events. The heat that we're feeling now, they did not expect until 2028. 2028. So, you know, uh, here we are, right? Now, I'm going to follow that so that, um, because it would be um, uh, shamed if people were not properly informed about this, right? So the data, the um, some of the uh, charts and graphs and everything else that were used in 2010 up to this very date, that's important that all of that be, you know, dished out to you guys so you guys can at least see it, right? so that you can see it. Did you guys lose sound in Mixler? Are you kidding? You guys lost sound in Mixler? Don't worry. We have all day. We have all day. Well, not all day, but we're going to get this done because it's important to me to have you guys informed about some things that will most certainly affect your lives. It's kind of like this heat, right? We start talking about this heat back in 2000, uh, what, 13, 14, and 15? You guys remember that? 2013, 14, and 15. And, uh, you know, I talked about the heat, and we talked about the storms. In fact, it was kind of funny, because back in 2013, and in uh, 13 it was, back 2013, 14, and 15, when I said that we would see temperatures at about 128 degrees, you guys remember that? And people said, oh, nobody sees temperatures at 128 degrees. But here we are, right? They've actually exceeded 128. They have. They've exceeded 128. 
uh, some of the storms that we have that are spontaneous. We've been very blessed not to have uh, much more severe storms than what we've had thus far. But um, all of it's intimately tied to human activity by way of their iniquity. Not by way of what they're using or anything, but by way of their iniquity. Isn't it funny how the world says humans are the cause of this weather phenomena, right? That's what they say. Humans are the cause of it. And the Bible says humans are the cause of it too. But the causes are different. The world says it's because of the cars and it's because of their carbon footprint, so on and so forth. And the Bible it says it's because of their iniquity. Isn't that something? Because of their iniquity. Isn't that something, right? Somebody says, uh, I heard a report last year of 140 in India. Yeah, there were actually, if I were to share some of the temperatures that um, I've actually, you know, seen myself, you guys wouldn't believe it. So it's best for me to leave it down to these uh, trackable temperatures that you guys can see on the Internet, right? Um, it's just like some of, the, some of you guys that were in the service when you were deployed. You would have to stay in places uh, for days on end. It'd be 125 degrees. And nobody talked about the temperatures. Full uniform at 125 degrees. Well, you, you come back here in the States and you tell people that, they probably at that time, they wouldn't believe it. They just wouldn't believe it. If you talk about 140, 150 degree temps, uh, they certainly would not believe that. Right? They wouldn't believe that at all. But... These are the times that we live in. And it's not the, uh, you know, it, it's not going to slow down. It's not going to alter. Now, of course, we're going to have a bit of a reprieve if we can get through these summer months when winter comes. Um, we're going to have a whole different scenario. And I believe this winter, you guys take note of what's happening in the heavens, the clouds, the uh, humidity, all these different factors. When the actual cooler temperatures come in, it could be a rainy season we've never witnessed before, right? I'm talking about a saturation event none of us have seen. And this is beyond that water event, sadly, folks, after the water event takes place. Do you guys understand that we will, it's, it's a high probability we will not see water at all? At all, no rain at all. Right? See, this is why I want to share this entire phenomenon with you. In the, in the Old Testament, when the waters of the deep were let loose, um, it's my intent to have you guys understand that based on uh, things they know of today. Right? Things they actually know of today. Things that are real today. Like the water that's, that's contained right underneath your feet. If that were to be opened, it would fill up the oceans again, right? There's more water in the earth than there is on the surface of earth. There's more water in the earth than the oceans contain right now, just so you understand that. There's pure water in the earth. This is drinkable water that's in the earth, right? And mankind, in his infinite wisdom, has engineered ways to cut that off, to control it, to make sure that... Um, you know, that, that, that can be ported somewhere else. So the construction of this earth, or how the earth is actually made, is mind-blowing. And, and carefully, carefully, I'll cover that. Because once that's covered, you get these people who, um, everybody has their idea of what they think earth is like. I'm going to tell you right here, right now, it does not matter what a person thinks um, the shape of the earth is, Right? Because right now, if you were stuck in the desert and two people were out there, one says, nope, the earth is round, and the other says, no, it's flat, both of them are going to be burning up because of the hot temperatures, right? Both of them are going to be suffering because of a lack of uh, water and resources in those dried out areas. So having that argument is not going to help them one bit. When we go through a meteor storm, it's not going to matter what the earth is what a person thinks the earth is. Because when everything starts to catch on fire, is it going to matter if it's flat or round? No, it isn't. That's not going to matter. What's going to matter then is the humanity of a person. 
So I'm telling you this to try and encourage you not to get caught up in these arguments, despite what you think, despite what you believe. Don't let darkness cause you to become an enemy of somebody else by any means. With Listen to me, with Satan. It's important that Satan have you make a target of someone, anyone. All these conversations that people are coming up with, all they do is cause a person to make somebody else a target. Don't allow Satan to use you like that. Please, don't do that. Don't allow Satan to use you like that. You have a lot of people who've gone off the deep end. They have. They've gone off the deep end with some of the uh, arguments and points of view to the point where they actually teach other folks to hate people, to be cruel to people, this and other. All that is senseless and useless. And number one, this is not man's planet. This place was created. And man was put on this planet, right? But it, it's not, it does not belong to man. It belongs to the living God, the one who created this place. And he's coming back with an eviction notice because he put something natural within people, and people are denying natural compassion. People are denying natural love. People are denying the natural way of things. And they're essentially recreating themselves into some, something that God did not make them to be. And he's coming back.